Lesson 2.5, Estimate with Two-Digit Divisors Using Compatible Numbers. Lesson 2.3 and 2.4 are linked in the description. We've learned that compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to calculate. It's very easy to divide 100 by 4. We can just think of a dollar split into four quarters. They're 25 cents each. If we have 800 and we split it in half, we divide it by 2, it's going to be a 400. We can use compatible numbers to estimate quotients by rounding the divisor to a multiple of 10 and rounding the dividend to the nearest multiple of the new divisor. Then we can use a basic division fact and pattern of zeros to complete the estimate. We have 2,692 divided by 28 it becomes 2,700 divided by 30 because our basic fact would be 27 divided by 3. That's equal to 9. If we add a 0 to the dividend and a 0 to the divisor, our quotient's going to stay the same. But if we add an extra 0 to the dividend, now our quotient is going to have an extra 0. It'll be equal to 90. So let's talk about that some more. For basic division facts and patterns of zeros, we have the basic fact of 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. When we give a 0 to the dividend, we give a 0 to the quotient. When we give two zeros to the dividend, we give two zeros to the quotient. When we give three zeros to the dividend, we give three zeros to the quotient. It's still the basic fact, 24 divided by 4, but now we have more zeros here and the same amount of zeros in our quotient. And there's another way to look at the pattern. We have our basic fact, 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. When we give a 0 to the dividend and the divisor, the quotient stays the same. 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6, and 240 divided by 40 is equal to 6, because we gave a 0 to both the dividend and divisor. So we can still see our basic fact, 24 divided by 4. When we give a zero to the dividend, and the divisor stays the same as the 40, now that that has an extra zero, our quotient's going to have an extra zero, it'll be 60. When we give two zeros to the dividend, the quotient will get two zeros. It's still 40 for the divisor, but now there's two more zeros here than there was up here. See? Now our quotient is 600. Now that we're in fifth grade, we should have our multiplication facts memorized at least till 10. It'd be better if you had them memorized up to 12. And choosing the best basic fact to use, we have 6,231 divided by 80. We can think of the basic fact, 56 divided by 8 is equal to 7. See the 56 divided by the 8? We've just got some extra zeros here, don't we? If we add a zero to the dividend and divisor, we have 560 divided by 80. That's still equal to 7 because we added a 0 to both the dividend and divisor. But if we add an extra 0 to the dividend, our quotient is going to go up to 70. If we use the basic fact 64 divided by 8 is equal to 8, we round our dividend to 6,400. We think 64 divided by 8, we've got some extra zeros here. If we give one zero to the dividend and one zero to the divisor from the basic fact, our quotient is going to stay the same. It's still going to be 8. But if we add an extra zero to the dividend, our quotient's going to have an extra zero, and it will equal 80. So the actual quotient is between 70 and 80. And 64 divided by 8 is the best basic fact we can use to estimate the actual quotient because 6,400 is closer to 6,231 than 5,600 is to 6,231. If we're not sure which one has the smallest difference, we can actually subtract, couldn't we? Here we have 5,358 divided by 92, we can use the basic fact 54 divided by 9 is equal to 6. 
That means we're going to use 5,400 divided by 90. We can get rid of a 0 in the 5,400. We could get rid of a 0 in the 90. And it will be equal to 60. We see an extra 0 here. We can estimate and rewrite the equation using a basic fact, 54 divided by 9. Then remove a 0 from both the dividend and divisor. And the dividend has 1, 0 left, so we give the quotient 1, 0. And we'll talk about this more in a minute. We can estimate a quotient by choosing two compatible numbers using basic facts. We have 2,594 divided by 68. We can use the basic fact 21 divided by 7. That's going to round this dividend to 2,100. It's going to round our divisor to 70. 21 divided by 7 is equal to 3. We have an extra 0 here, so our quotient is going to be 30. We can also think of the basic fact 28 divided by 7. That will give us 2,800 divided by 70. That will be equal to 40. So which estimate do you think is better, 30 or 40? If you said 40, you're right. The reason is 2,800 is closer to 2,594 than 2,100 is. This is just so close to 2,600. That's close to 2,800. See? Now we have 1,852 divided by 32. We can think of the basic fact 18 divided by 3 is equal to 6. That means we have 1,800 divided by 30. We've got an extra 0 here. If we took away that 0 and that 0, it would be 180 divided by 3, which is 60. We have an 18 divided by 3. If we take that 0 away and that 0 away, that's equal to a 6. But because of that extra 0 in the dividend, we attach it to the quotient. That makes it 60. We can also round this up to 2,100, thinking of the basic fact, 21 divided by 3 is equal to 7. Then we would have 2,100 divided by 30. We can cross off this 0 and that 0. We can see our basic fact, 21 divided by 3, except we have an extra 0 in the dividend, which is going to put an extra 0 into the quotient. So instead of 7, it's going to be equal to 70. And which is the better estimate? 60 or 70? If you said 60, you're right, because 1,800 is very close to 1,852. It's much closer than 2,100 is to 1,852. So 60 would be the better estimate. We can always subtract. We can do 1,852 minus 1,800 and find the difference. Then do 2,100 minus 1,852 and find the difference. And whichever one has the smallest difference is the one that's closer to the actual answer. Sophia has $725 to buy fabric to sew 28 shirts to sell. She plans to spend about the same amount of money for each shirt. Estimate how much she can spend on fabric for each shirt. So we're looking for each shirt. So think, we can use compatible numbers and basic facts to estimate the cost of fabric for each shirt. We have $725 divided by 28. We can think of 6 divided by 3 as our basic fact. We have an 600 divided by 30. And if we get rid of this extra 0 and this extra 0, we can see 6 divided by 3 and because the dividend has an extra 0. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Our quotient is going to have an extra 0. It will be 20. We can also round this up to 900 to think of the basic fact 9 divided by 3. And if we get rid of this 0 and this 0, we'd have 9 divided by 3, but the dividend would have an extra 0. 9 divided by 3 is 3, with an extra 0 makes it $30. So she can spend between $20 and $30 on fabric for each shirt. 
and Sophia should spend closer to $20 because $600 is closer to $725 than $900 is to $725. The difference between our dividend and our estimate $600 is $125, and the difference between our dividend and our estimate $900 is $175. Because this is a smaller amount, it's closer to the actual amount. So $20 would be the better estimate. We need to estimate 303 divided by 47. And one way we can do it is 47 is close to 50. We can skip count by 50 to 300 and count how many times we skip counted. We count 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. That's six times. That means it's about six. Another way would be we round 303 to 347 to 50. We think of the basic fact 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6. That's 300 divided by 50. We've crossed off this zero and crossed off this zero, so we can see our basic fact, 30 divided by 5. Because we crossed off a zero in both the dividend and divisor, our quotient is going to stay a 6. The quotient stayed the same because we gave a zero to both the dividend and divisor, or you can look at it as we can cross them both off after we write it out. And the quotient stays as 6. Here we have 3,148 divided by 83. We can think of the 83 as an 80, and the 3,148 is 3,200. Then we'd have the basic fact, 32 divided by 8. 32 divided by 8 is 4. We can cross off this 0 in the dividend and cross off this 0 in the divisor. So we're doing the same thing to both the dividend and divisor. We can see 32 divided by 8 with an extra 0. That would be a 4 with an extra 0. That would be 40. We can remove a 0 from the dividend and divisor. And beyond the basic fact of 32 divided by 8, the dividend still has a 0, so our quotient will have a 0. We went from 3,200 divided by 80 to 320 divided by 8 by crossing off those zeros and 8 can fit into 32 four times with an extra 0. It's 40. Let's try it again. Here we have 1,924 divided by 18. We can think of the 18 as a 20 and the 1,924 as a 2,000. That means we have 2,000 divided by 20. If we cross off this 0 in the dividend and a 0 in the divisor, we now have 200 divided by 2. You can either do that in your head because it would be 100, right? We're just splitting the 200 in half. We can also think of it as 20 divided by 2, which is 10, with an extra 0. That's 100. We cross off a 0 from the dividend and the divisor. And the basic fact is 20 divided by 2. There's an extra 0 in the dividend. It tells us to give a 0 to the quotient. We had 2,000 divided by 20. We crossed off that 0 and that 0 which gave us a 200 divided by 2, which is 100. And remember, whether we're doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column. In our next lesson, 2.6, we're actually going to be doing long division. We're going to divide by two-digit divisors with long division. I hope the rest of your day is wonderful, and I hope I see you next time. Bye.